Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today checking out something a bit different. It's this Intel NUC. And this one uh, features the i7 6770HQ CPU. So this will be uh, quite interesting. It's been a while since I've um, reviewed a bare bones PC, or a mini PC if you like to put it that way. The last one I did was way back when I was hosting Playtech TV and I checked out the Gigabyte Bricks. Um, so this will be quite interesting to uh, have a look at this one and uh, see how it does. So let's first talk about the exterior then. First thing you see. So um, normally this would have a skull on it right here, but for some reason this one doesn't have it. Uh, this was given to me by Intel to test out, so I don't know why that is. However, at the same time, um, this lid is removable and you can you know, replace it, I guess, if you break it or scratch it up real bad. But also, uh, you can 3D print your own lid for it, so if you want to make some sort of custom design, you can, which I think is really, really cool. Now, it's very basic looking. I mean, there really isn't uh, too much to it. There's a vent down one end, but the main exhaust is around the back here, and this is where the uh, CPU will exhaust from. And, uh, yeah, it's just... I don't know, it's not much I can really say about it. It's just very, very standard stock looking plastic uh, little enclosure it has here. Uh, now let's talk about the dimensions then, because they are very small. So dimensions wise, it's coming in at 211 millimeters, I suppose you would say long, by 116 millimeters wide, by 28 millimeters thick. So this is very, very small. I mean, I have quite large hands, but you can even see um, compared to my hand, you know, this is very, very small. So that's one of the main benefits of them is that uh, a lot of times you can uh, fit them on behind your monitor if you want a really, really tight, um, tidy setup. But also, you know, you can just put them on your desk right under your monitor or something like that. And it's just very uh, clutter free, very nice uh, from that perspective. So let's talk about the I.O. then. So we'll look around the front there. We see that it's just got a 3.5mm headphone jack, uh, two USB 3.0 ports. The yellow one will be a charging port. And a SD card slot, the power button there. There's nothing on the sides. And then when we flip around the back, uh, we see the DC in for the power. Uh, that's a uh, audio out. The Gigabit Ethernet port. Two more three, uh, USB 3.0 slots. A Thunderbolt 3 slot, uh, no, before that, it's got a, a mini display port, then a Thunderbolt 3 slot, and a full size uh, HDMI slot. So that's quite interesting. Um, yeah, uh, it's pretty good IO. That was actually one thing I remember back from the Gigabyte Bricks was that it actually quite limited IO. And um, this is quite good. You've got a lot there. You've got four different uh, USB connection points. The Thunderbolt 3 is a nice little addition there. And then for your video, um, I suppose you could go through uh, the Thunderbolt if you wanted to go to Display Port, I would imagine 1.2. I think there's adapters for that off the top of mind. Um, but yeah, you've still got the mini display port right there. That'll be mini display port 1.2 and that uh, HDMI 2.0. So that's quite good. So if you really wanted to drive a 4K panel at 60 hertz on this little guy, you could if you really wanted to, although I probably wouldn't recommend it. Now let's go over the specs then. So uh, I'll put it up for you guys so you can see uh, everything it's got. Um, but I'll just go over the key ones. So the CPU is the Intel i7-6770HQ. So that's a quad core with hyperthreading. 2.6 gigahertz base clock and a 3.5 gigahertz turbo clock. That's really nice. So obviously it'll be using the uh, onboard graphics. Doesn't have a discrete GPU in it. And that means you're getting uh, the Intel Iris Pro Graphics 580. Now, as far as memory goes, uh, so you're going to have to add in your own memory unless you buy it from a, a retailer that or has already put it in for you. But uh, it takes dual channel DDR4 2133 megahertz plus SODIMS. Um, it goes up to 32 gigabytes max, which will be plenty for something like this. Uh, this one I was testing in particular had just 16 gigabytes of DDR4 at 2133 megahertz. Now storage-wise, it can take uh, two M.2 SSDs if you want to. This one just had a single Samsung 950 Pro 256GB SSD in it, which was um, plenty for everything. I was doing very fast as well. Very good, those um, 950 Pro M.2 SSDs are very, very good. 
Now, as far as power goes, um, it doesn't have, obviously, an internal power supply. It has a big power brick that it comes with, a 120-watt power brick. Now, networking-wise, it's going with Intel Dual Band Wireless AC8260. Uh, so that'll be really good. Wireless AC, you know, you're definitely going to be wanting that. And, of course, a gigabit Ethernet port. And warranty-wise, it's coming with a three-year warranty. So you can see it's got pretty um, decent specs there, especially for a little uh, mini PC of this size. But then, of course, the thing you're going to ask is, what about the performance, Kevin? How does it actually do? Well, I've got you covered. So uh, without further ado, we'll jump into the benchmarks. One thing I will say is that all of these benchmarks, um, the gaming ones, were done at 1080p. I wasn't dropping the resolutions down. But you'll see I did different graphic settings because usually I just run everything on their ultra preset or the highest preset it comes with. It wouldn't be very fair to do it with this guy. So I did it on their low preset, the medium preset, and the high preset, but all at 1080p. So let's jump into it and see how this little guy does. <laughs> So as you can see there, it actually does a pretty decent job for a, a little mini PC. However, those games like Dirt Rally, you know, that's a, it's quite a high requirement game. Um, on low, you're going to get by with it, you know, getting above 60 FPS most of the time. So that's good. However, the graphics aren't really that good um, on that setting. But then when you go to medium, you see that big drop. So I would say on average, depending on which games you're playing, you probably should be able to play at 1080p, but you're probably going to be playing at like a medium setting um, in a very high requirement game. You're probably going to go down to low, and in a uh, more sort of low requirement game, you're going to be able to go up to high. So in something like League of Legends or Dota 2, I would imagine you'd be able to do 1080p on a high preset. Um, you might need to fiddle with a few things, but you should be able to get away with that. But as I showed you guys in those more sort of like AAA title type games, um, yeah, you're going to, if you're happy at just being over 30 FPS, you'll probably be able to get away with sort of like a low medium um, type setting. So it will get you by, but it will definitely be very much a entry level sort of performance standard, I would put it that way. Now, how about heat and noise, performances and everything? How did it go in that department? So I will say in the heat department, it definitely got very, 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 very toasty. And this is something I noticed with the uh, Gigabyte bricks as well. They also got extremely hot uh, when I was testing them. So when I ran the uh, Intel Extreme Tuning Utility benchmark with this little mini PC, Although it did get quite a good score, it got very, very hot. It went up to 100 degrees Celsius, which is the thermal limit for this CPU and the thermal limit for most Intel CPUs. Um, and it was throttling. It wasn't throttling a huge amount, but it was throttling a little bit and it would drop down to say like 95 degrees, you know, maybe 92 degrees or something like that. And then it would shoot back up to about 100 and you know, the way that the, the benchmark works sort of it comes in waves. Um, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> not really ideal, however, the throttling wasn't that bad, and that is a synthetic, like, stress test. So, in the real world, when I was doing uh, the actual benchmarks, it still did get very hot, but it I did not see any um, throttling when I was actually doing uh, those performance benchmarks. 
So that's just something to keep in mind. It was still going well up to like 90 degrees Celsius though. So this thing does get very, very hot. Now, as far as noise goes, when you're just doing casual things like browsing the web and watching videos and stuff like that, it'll be absolutely fine. It'll make no noise at all, completely silent. When you start gaming, however, that changes. It doesn't get super loud, but I would say it gets kind of like average gaming PC loud, um, probably more comparable to a laptop, sort of like what I would call average amount of noise for a gaming laptop out of all the ones I've tested. Um, so yeah, not too bad, easily drowned out, but you know, it still is a little bit on the noisy side. You're definitely gonna notice it. Um, but of course, I'll let you guys judge for yourself. So this is what it sounded like during the Unigen Valley benchmark on the Extreme HD preset. So yeah, that should uh, give you an idea of basically what the noise will be like. It's, it, as I said, it's not really, it's definitely not horrendous, but it's um, not super quiet either. It's sort of right in the middle there. Which brings us now to the conclusion. And what do I make of this little uh, Intel NUC featuring the i7-6770HQ CPU? So looks wise, I mean, it's decent. I mean, it's got good dimension, so that's always nice, but it's pretty basic looking. Um, IO wise, it's actually pretty good. It's got a good use of IO. Uh, this really does need to be said because many PCs come with, you know, it's like they'll, they'll have like two USB ports and it's not really practical for anything. Um, but this one is quite good IO. It has impressive specs for a little bare bones PC. So I was quite impressed with that. Performance wise, it's going to be a very much an entry level gaming, um, sort of like PC performance type thing or an entry-level gaming laptop type performance nothing too extraordinary but you will it will get you by for all your lower requirement games uh, like League of Legends and Dota 2 uh, very easily also Overwatch on 1080p on a medium setting it was getting about like 50 FPS so maybe if you played with a few of the settings you'd be able to get it to up over 60 and Overwatch at 1080p consistently uh, it had quite high heat, which does need to be noted. So this thing does get pretty damn hot. Um, Noise-wise, it was about medium. It's about average, I would say. So, all in all, yes, I do recommend it. It is quite good. I would put it this way. Um, if you're a person out there that is not doing heavy gaming, they're only going to play the odd game every so often, and it's going to be quite a light game, like something like League of Legends or Dota 2 then this will get you by just fine. And for all your casual stuff, browsing web, media use especially, if you wanted uh, to turn this into sort of like a media center or something like that, it would be abso absolutely superb for that. Uh, so that's really good. Um, but anything beyond that, uh, gaming wise, or you know, any sort of productivity stuff, heavy productivity stuff, will just be a bit beyond this. So I'd recommend it to those people out there that would be doing uh, quite light stuff like that. It would be great for um, a, a parent or just someone that's not going to be gaming on it or anything like that that just wants a nice small you know still good performance never going to be lagging no matter what you're doing on it casual wise you know documents wise or browsing the web wise um, so it'd be perfect for that sort of thing so I definitely would recommend it and this is the type of thing I 100% want to get for like my mum or something um, that's mainly she's watching videos she's doing stuff like that typing up a bunch of documents things like that it'd be absolutely perfect for her and uh, that's who I recommend it for. So people doing light gaming and people who are wanting uh, a media center or just people that want a small, bare bones, good PC that's never gonna have any performance issues in uh, casual type stuff like browsing web and watching videos. Now I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.